So it was just over a year ago that we were out in the Santa Barbara, California area for the introduction of this Toyota Prius Prime. While we were out there, we thought it was a decent vehicle. It was an interesting riff on this next generation of Prius. Of course, this next generation of Prius, or the current generation, is significantly better than the one it replaced, and this plug-in version isn't bad. Um, we have some things we like, some things we dislike, but overall, is it worth your time and money to purchase this? That's what we're gonna find out next here on rubblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. Because it had been about a year, actually a little over a year since we had driven this vehicle on the introduction, we went back and watched our video of the first drive. And we're curious, do the initial thoughts that we had of driving it for a few hours hold up after driving it for a week? And the answer to that is, for the most part, yes. There are a few things that we notice now that we didn't notice out there, but again, these are the things you notice living with something for a week versus, you know, a couple hours. Um, overall, this is not a bad vehicle, but is it worth a few of the penalties for the plug-in uh, benefits? And the answer to that is it's going to highly depend on your use case. So, a couple of the things that we really noticed on this is the, really note, because we had to, we used it a few times, is the load floor. Because this is a plug-in and it requires extra space for the batteries, I think it amounts to about 220 to 250 pounds of added weight on the tail, uh, the load floor is significantly higher. I believe it's four or five inches uh, addition, uh, of additional height on the load floor in the in the back. And it doesn't sound like a lot until you start trying to load things in there and you realize, wow, that's a lot of useful space that's now gone. Is that is that a big deal to you? Maybe, maybe not. The other thing is you lose a flat load floor. And again, we'll roll in a picture here and you can really see uh, the difference between where the height of the, of the loading area in the hatch versus when you fold the seats down. It's, like I said, pretty significant. Again, does that matter to you? Who knows? The range on this is about 25 miles with uh, plug-in, you know, with uh, on pure, oops, can't go that way, uh, on pure electric power. And it's not bad. It's, it's actually very accurate. And we tested out in California in favorable conditions. I think it was in the 70s when we were out there. I'm don't remember it was it was beautiful whatever it was it was very pretty as we've had it here uh, just before Thanksgiving in 2017 for the most part it's been cold is the wrong word but you're a little cooler than normal for this time of year um, most of the time we've had it temperatures have been in the high 30s and low 40s and it's not quite the temperature where you notice a big degradation in battery performance, but you begin to notice it at that point. And we've still been able to get right around 25, 26 miles to the gallon, uh, or 25 or 26 miles, sorry, on a full charge the two times we were able to fully charge it. The other side of that though is 25 miles is nice, but is that enough? And for us, the answer is no. Now, if you can drive, uh, if, if your use case says that you can drive and plug in where you work, or you can utilize most of that on your commutes, then maybe it does work out for you. But with many more uh, plug-in hybrid versions uh, vehicles coming out now, 25 miles is getting a little short. Uh, and given that there's the premium on this over a Prius, as far as purchase price, is it worth it? Now, in certain parts of the U.S., possibly because 
it gets uh, you can you can do HOV lanes in it because it's a plug-in. Uh, you may get better more tax breaks because it's still eligible, not for much longer, but it's still eligible for federal and perhaps state tax breaks in your area. So maybe that makes up the difference for you. In other parts of the world where in places like London and Paris and, and a few other places, China coming up where they're gonna start not allowing internal combustion engines inside city limits, the fact that this can run on pure battery power may be a benefit for those of you who are watching not in the US. One of the nice little add-ons here is the fact that you can cycle between battery and internal combustion uh, with a push of a button here. So if you're driving in the city and you want to maximize that electric range, you can do so. Once you get on the highway where the electric motor isn't quite the advantage, you can flip it off, save that power, electric power for when you get off the, uh, the highway. So that was a nice touch. As far as driving dynamics, yes, it has some. There's that CVT sound. Uh, we've pretty much depleted the battery. So we're running purely on uh, the internal combustion engine here for the most part, except for when we can get into uh, hybrid mode here. Uh, the dynamics on this are fine. Uh, you know, it's not gonna, it's not a sports car. If you're not hustling around corners, you don't really notice the extra weight out back. As far as normal ride, it's okay. There's, it's, you get on some potholy roads and you can feel a suspension crash a little bit. Um, you know, it's got the low rolling resistance tires, so compromised with that as well. But day in, day out as a commuting vehicle, it's okay. Um, does it inspire any kind of passion? Well, not for us, um, but it's okay. And I can see why if you do a lot of driving or for a commuter vehicle, this would be a, an interesting choice and not maybe not a bad choice. As far as technology, it has a 11.7 inch display screen here that has a host of different uh, options here. It's all touch screen. There are no physical knobs. Hopefully that trend has peaked and we are now moving back to physical knobs because having physical knobs is far better and far more intuitive as you're driving and trying to make adjustments. There's been a couple of times we went to uh, change a couple things here as far as the radio and by where we place our hand to reach over and touch with say our thumb, shut the, shut the uh, system off. Again, it's no physical buttons, it's a thing. This also does have uh, Qi wireless charging, so those of you with Androids, you'll be happy. Now, those of you with the latest iPhones, the 8s and the uh, 10s, uh, you can enjoy wireless charging as you drive. This has Bluetooth. The JBL audio system in here is okay. It's certainly far better than the standard system. It's a little tinny. But overall, even when you're plugging in, listening to higher quality MP3s or FLAC files, it's not bad. Most of the people owning this aren't gonna be audiophiles. I mean, not to stereotype, but it is. They're gonna be happy to have whatever they have, and they won't even be plugging in. Uh, they'll just be Bluetoothing it, which at, at that point, your audio quality is compromised to begin with. So the other thing to think about here is overall fuel economy. So we've had this for a week. We've put a couple hundred miles on it. Uh, highway, mostly city driving, but some highway driving. And our combined is uh, 50, just under 55 miles to the gallon. Given the extra cost of the plug-in, is that really worth it when in the standard uh, Prius, it's pretty easy to average the same or better. Now, given that you can uh, plug in and utilize that and, and get extra mileage. And as we said, depending on your availability, uh, is that worth it to you? Don't know. Um, for us, our, our use case, which, okay, again, not exactly the vehicle we choose, but given the mass and where fuel economy is now, we think you'd be better served going with the standard Prius hybrid versus the plug-in. That's not to say that you shouldn't think about this. Uh, when you're running in pure electric uh, battery mode, the acceleration is probably better than what it is with gasoline. Um, it's quiet, 
the inter you know, even running now, it's not bad. It's a decent vehicle. There are other options out there that you should consider. The Prius is always going to be the first choice because they've been doing this for, what, 17, 18 years now. And this is, you know, the third iteration or fourth, sorry, the fourth iteration of this vehicle. Toyota knows what they're doing. The history uh, is proven. The reliability is proven. So we understand why when you think hybrids, most people come to this. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be driving the Hyundai Ioniq. That's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting contrast to this to see where someone like Hyundai is going with this. But you know, what do you what do we think of this? It's fine styling. There's no use to talk about styling. You're either going to be okay with it or you're going to find it hideous. There is no in between on it. The interior of this uh, Prius Prime is okay. Uh, it's exactly the interior you expect in it. One of the things we talked about in our preview or our first drive was this the use of white the white in the interior, how it seemed out of place. Some of that has been pulled back, at least in this particular trim model. Um, the center console here is black for the most is black, which is far better than the white. It's, it's less garish. Uh, but there is still white plastic here on the steering wheel and uh, over here where the uh, transmission selector is and where you select EV and drive modes. Still not a fan. Still not a fan. Uh, the center display here for all of your readouts, you get used to it after a while. It's still not our favorite. We'd rather have regular dials, but hey, spaceship, right? Uh, this also does have a heads-up display, which has been nice. Even with polarized glasses, it wasn't bad. So, and that's really uh, difficult to do normally with with a heads-up display. Yes, it's compromised because of polarized glasses, but uh, you know it, it works. The other uh, item we wanted to call out here in the interior is where the uh, heated seat selection is here. It's hidden. It's way down underneath here, and again, we'll roll in a picture for you. If you don't know where it is, it's going to take you a couple minutes to find it because it's not exactly where you'd expect to find it. Uh, once you're down, once you get down there, yes, you can. Sorry, just checking on something down there. Anyways, um, it, it's fine to reach. It's just not. It's not easy to get to. It's not. It should be up here where the rest of your controls are, not hidden underneath. So should you choose the Prius Prime over the standard uh, Prius Hybrid? The answer is, as we said earlier, eh, maybe, maybe not. It's very use case dependent. From our point of view, we don't really see the benefit with only a 25 mile plug-in range. But again, that's living here in the Metro Detroit area. We don't have HOV, we don't have tax breaks for, or city estate tax breaks for uh, hybrids and plug-ins and things like that. If you live in an area that does, that may affect your your point of view. Uh, as far as fuel economy, yes, 25 miles on an, uh, a full charge is okay, but given where we've come in the, just in the last couple of years with uh, what's available, it's still somewhat compromised, especially with, as we said, what's coming out and on the market now and in the very near future. Uh, we can get the same or even better fuel economy with just the standard hybrid uh, and have less have less weight, less compromised trunk area. So again, use case dependent, and there's a significant tax, uh, excuse me, a significant price difference here. So uh, we, we'll list out here what it is. I don't have it handy with me right now, but we'll list out what the difference in pricing is between the regular Prius and this plug-in version. You know, overall it's fine. Again, very use case dependent. Go drive one, see what you think. It's not our thing. It just isn't. Is it an okay vehicle? Sure. For the right type of person, it's probably the perfect car. Um, nothing terribly wrong with it. It's all personal use case. It really is. And I know we're harping on personal use case in this. It's probably the seventh time we've said it. But it's true. This is a very use case dependent vehicle. If it fits you, you'll probably like it. And if it's not, there's probably better choices out there for you.